So we've been talking a little bit in the first segment about organizing for action, shadow government, and the fact that our last president doesn't seem to want to go away. I want to move into some related topics, however. So honored to have Phil Haney in studio with me and his years of experience. He was an original member of the Department of Homeland Security. They just wouldn't let him do his job. Phil Haney, do you think the new Department of Homeland Security is going to be allowed to do it? its job. The signs I've seen so far I'm very encouraged by, and I'd like to direct your listeners to a directive that new Secretary of Homeland Security Kelly signed on the 20th of February. It's called Implementation of Immigration Reform. The very first paragraph of the directive says that all previous executive orders and policies are now rescinded. In one directive, Secretary Kelly has begun to dismantle all of the destructive policies of the Obama administration. What's particularly intrigued to me is down on the bottom of page 5 of the uh, directive, which you can see if you look it up online, regarding what is called bringing the privacy right, the Privacy Act, into alignment with existing law, which of course at the plain meaning of the words means that the Privacy Act was not in alignment with law under the Obama administration. And to cut to the chase on the meaning of it, it proves that I was investigated illegally by the Obama administration because they accused me through the Department of Justice and they sought to indict me on criminal charges with the grand jury for abusing the privacy rights of foreign nationals. And now we've come to a point where I have an official document signed by the new Secretary of Homeland Security, Mr. Kelly, by default showing that the Obama administration was abusing the law and going after people who were simply trying to protect our country from threat, both foreign and domestic. Well, you say let our intelligence agencies do their job and they can protect us. So you are hopeful that the Donald Trump administration will allow these agencies to do their job. Referring again to the directive of February 20, yep. it specifically discusses Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE, Customs and Border Protection, my former agency, yep. and the Border Patrol, giving them, or I should say allowing them to go back to the standards that we operated under when the agency was created in 2003. The key word is implementation. Okay. There's no unilateral changes of policy policies in these directives and executive orders that the Trump administration is bringing forward. They are implementation of existing law. Everybody in law enforcement is shouting hallelujah okay. over this one. Yes. Okay. So do you feel that the philosophy of see something, say nothing is history? That's my hope. And I believe I have enough confidence to say that it's going to fade into the past because the whole structure of law enforcement and threat protection is going to be fact-based now and based on existing law rather than these ever-changing subjective mm -hmm. definitions of what the threat is, which in law enforcement is a fatal error because if you don't understand the nature of the threat, you can't protect yourself from it. I said moments ago that there's almost been a shadow government called the Muslim Brotherhood. Michelle, you paid quite a price. It goes back to 2012, I believe. You spoke about Huma Abedin. To say you were persecuted is such an understatement. And you don't have any regrets, do you? No, not at all, because I was doing my job and fulfilling my duty, just as Phil Haney was doing yeah. his job and fulfilling his duty. We took our duty seriously. We took our oath to the Constitution seriously. We were in very different capacities, one as a representative, right. one as a part of Homeland Security. But nonetheless, we were trying to follow the law. And because of that, Phil was investigated. I went through the situations that I went through. But no, it is a privilege to stand up and do your position. Position. There, there are still threads of the Muslim Brotherhood throughout Washington. Oh, threads, they're, for heaven's they're, sake. They're not that clean, that I mean, woven fabric yeah. is still very much yeah. a part of Washington, D.C. How and do we get rid of it? A few things that I think need to be done. And quite clearly, I think that per
personnel becomes policy. Phil quoted from policy, good policy that Donald Trump put forward. But again, the culture of the Pentagon, the culture of the Department of Defense, the culture of Homeland Security, the culture of local law enforcement agencies were dramatically changed by the directives and the personnel that Barack Obama put into place. That doesn't change necessarily overnight. And I believe what we need to see are entire agencies ended. I would like to see the Department of Education ended. We don't need a national Department of Education. That can happen at the state level. But I also think we need a tremendous reduction in force of a lot of these federal bureaucracies. And then again, I think Donald Trump needs to put in people who agree with him, who are loyal to him in these positions to carry out and implement what he wants to do. A very good example, the acting U.S. attorney, a female, chose to disobey the directive of the president. In other words, Mm -hmm. she substituted herself as president and she was disobeying Donald Trump's directives. She was fired. That is one very high level example of personnel deciding that they're going to go with their beliefs as opposed to Donald Trump's. Don't think that isn't happening down the line through a lot of these agencies. And that's why personnel can be policy and there probably needs to be personnel changes as well as policy changes. It won't happen overnight. People need to continue to pray and do our part in this as well.